and welcome in. This is the Connor G Show. I'm your host, and this is the Faking Jamaican Report. Right, so let's get stuck into it. We got so much to get through. We introduced to you this brand new fake in Jamaican. His name was Extreme Measure. Extreme Measure is a brand new fake in Jamaican. He's probably the youngest fake in Jamaican, believe it or not. They they uh, range in age from Rodigan to Rasklat. David Rodigan. They call him uh, Rodigan to Rasklat in the YouTube comments. The YouTube comments are demanding that I cover him, but he's not really a fake in Jamaican. He's more of just a, you know, a dancehall reggae DJ. He's probably the oldest. Then Tug of War, then M.R, then Talapaton. Don't know how old Tina Rizzle is. That says she's the same age as Talapaton. And then we've got Extreme Measure. He's the baby of the bunch. We listen to a few of Extreme Measure's freestyles. He has barely any content. He is fresh out of Pampers, right? We liked one of his freestyles. His other one, not so much. Um, we were laughing at his physique. And we kind of found the song kind of funky, right? And I think it was the day after the episode aired, RTM Podcast released their podcast with extreme measure it was like literally the next day right so i was able to go and get a screenshot from their podcast and use it in my extreme measure clip right you can see that on youtube.com slash connor gillespie the rtm podcast was that podcast that m.r was on screaming and shouting at that lady who was jamaican or her parents were jamaican you know uh, it didn't matter to me if she was really Jamaican or not. We were just there to have a good old laugh at M.R.'s expense, right? Boy, did I get this fella young spray wrong. Here is the RTM podcast. This was the guy, and he was encouraging M.R. And in my clip, I was like, oh, this guy's a waste of space. He's just piggybacking on M.Dots. Boy, did I get this guy wrong. This guy is a master wind-up merchant, right? This guy gives the goods, right? I suggest everyone go subscribe to this here. So he seems to be the main character, and then that other woman, I think her name was Lady Ice Cream. She's usually in, and then sometimes they get other guys in. I owe this guy a big apology for the way I spoke about him in that clip, because he is, you know, he's extremely good at what he does. They also, I watched a few more clips. They had Snowy Danger on, right? And, you know, he was baiting Snowy Danger so much. He was he was saying he was just calling Snowy Danger a racist and all. And like Snowy knew he was trying to wind him up, just being cheeky for the sake of it. Right. But he was still getting triggered by it. He, he had Snowy Danger tortured. He kept saying he was mates with um, Tommy Robinson and all this air stuff. And Snowy just absolutely fell for it. Right. Uh, his name's Young Spray. So aside from his name sounding like something you would call a cat before it's neutered, he does a very good job. So big shout outs to him. <laughs> so yes, he will. He he does this thing where he's like provoking, you know, the the guest and <laughs> no. stuff. He's, he'll deliberately say what they don't want to hear. You know, these uh, these fake and Jamaicans have done a lot of convincing in their own minds. It takes so much to walk around doing Jamaican patois, using Jamaican slang in your day-to-day -day life as an English white person. You know how much mental gymnastics you have to do to make that seem normal, even in your own head? Never mind convincing other people. And he'll just come straight out, a, a, bit, a little bit like what we do here on this show, except he says it in front of them. He'll just say the thing that they know in their head that they're dying for no one ever to say out loud in front of them so i mean he, i can't say enough good things about this young spray fella right so he'll be receiving a massive christmas hamper from me this year let me tell you that right now let's get on to <laughs> raw 12 10 says you at least have the decency to slag them off behind their back yes exactly i'm not a crazy insane madman Right? I would never say the things I say in the show to people's faces. Ever. I'm not a psycho. Now, I'm not saying that Young Spray is a psycho, but he certainly is a madman. <laughs> Let's get into the clips. I've got so much stuff for you. Right. So what, what should I say? What should I say? Let's play this. Let's just play the first thing, and then we can get into 
a bit more a bit more of the nitty gritty of everything here right without further ado it's rtm podcast featuring extreme measure this came out like the day after we did uh, the show about him uh just perfect timing this could be the funniest interview that i've ever seen in my entire life everybody go subscribe to this here we go it's extreme measure on the rtm podcast thanks thanks for featuring oh i got my guy mad <laughs> oh no 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 i don't know the sub, yeah no, man, you're good, man. Okay, boom. so this am i going mad thing that seems to be what they say for you know like was that a bit too far or something i mean i guess you know i guess you do a line and i'll do a line honey our worlds are miles apart here so i'm doing the best i can it'd be good to find out like a different story in it because it's like obviously i don't know I don't know nothing about his story, so it'll be interesting today to no, find out like everything. Obviously, I didn't know nothing about M. Dot either before that day, so it was like that was just me, just taking in everything. Why for that? Crazy. On the day, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, on the day. So this why for that? They keep saying why for that, and if I can translate what why for that means, these are all big hip hop fans in the chat here. I'm assuming why for that means the same as. No homo. Bam, bam. Right, so it's that, you know, this uh, this hip-hop uh, Jamaican dancehall world. Very, very homophobic, right? I got the boom bye bye rhythm here to play for this. So why for that means pause. Remember they used to Cameron and uh, Dipset and all would say pause, no homo. They still, Cameron still says that to this day. With him and his little podcast with Mace. <laughs> so um, that's all that means, just in case you hear this here. I mean, I've heard that Jamaicans hate gay people. And M.R fans have been calling me a batty man for about three weeks now. I've been getting some violent homophobic death threats in my DMs from M.R fans. You know what that song's about, right? So, uh, um, back to Extreme Measures story here, right? Let's just hear a little bit more of this here. Like, I know White Yardy's story, and he grew up there and all that, whatever. But anyway, boom. So, White Yardy, someone write that down. We might have to look up White Yardy. Let's get into some RTM. Crazy thing. Pod no, not crazy thing, man. You're getting mad, just calm. Right, so I think that clip was just about the wife of that and going mad. I just, because they say that quite a lot, thought I'd introduce, just clear up what that means in case anybody's lost. One bag of Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Oli, crazy. yeah. Ooh, did you hear him there? That's the first time we've heard Extremes, real voice on this program. I've been listening to him nonstop for weeks. I know everything about Extreme Measure here at this point. Where was you born? Nottingham. Nottingham? Nottingham he was born, all right? So I got one YouTube comment that said, Extreme Measure is Jamaican, actually. <laughs> so I was very pleased when that comment came in. <laughs> Born in Nottingham, I moved to Birmingham when I was about... Probably about five, six. So, born in Nottingham, moved to Birmingham when he was about five or six. But he speaks with... Nottingham. Speaks with Jamaican accent. No, brothers. Those four sisters. Four sisters? Yeah. So you think, well, maybe, maybe there's some, maybe his mother is Jamaican, even if she's white. Never really missed my father in our way, so. So his father wasn't really present, okay? What background is your mum? Not making fun of that, by the way, I'm just saying. A lot of these fake and Jamaicans seem to be compensating for something that might be going wrong or missing from their lives, right? I've noticed that as a pattern. My mum is white Irish. Oh, yeah, White Irish! <laughs> Just like me! Mm. And my dad is Asian mixed with white. He's Asian. His dad is Asian mixed with white. Yeah. They don't believe him, neither do I. <laughs> Could be true. Doesn't really matter. I'm not bothered. I mean, brilliant if it is. Brilliant if it isn't. Who cares? But that was my reaction to Young's He's not Spray. Asian, bro. My, my father is Asian mixed with white, man. <laughs> you ain't got Asian. See him with your, see him with your me can drop the path to accent wicked. I see him with him there on a couple of seats. I see he's got mad as well. Yeah, him, him I got mad. So is uh, dad 
half white, half Asian, mother white Irish, right? Is this his real voice? Is he putting this on? Let's have a wee look, see. So you don't think he's got identity crisis? Culture vulture. Do you think you're a culture vulture? Mm. Right, so Young Spray asks him, do you think you're a culture vulture? And he immediately says, no. no. What is a culture vulture? So nobody can quite put their finger on this culture vulture thing here. Like, what is a culture vulture? Yo, I'm going to switch it into English and drop it like this. Yeah. No, but what is a culture what? vulture? <laughs> Did you hear that there? What is a culture vulture? And listen to how he responds to this. This is the most, I mean, RTM podcast. Bravo. Bravo. His legs are shaking a bit, says Rare Witch. They, he's very nervous, so his legs are going like the clappers this whole time. Like, what is a culture vulture? Yo, I'm going to switch it into English and drop it like this, yeah? No, what is I'm going to switch it into English and drop it like this, yeah? <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty. Things like this here is what makes me happy. Get to know me. So he just drops the patois confirming what everyone knew and thought to be the case already. You are putting it on. You are putting it on to fit in. And look, what's one hour into this four hour long podcast? It's a culture vulture. You see, if I was walking around with string vests on and... Mm. How did his eyes not pop out of his head there? I like a spliff out my mouth and a dragon style. See, that's what we... Right, so... The note that I have here says, they ask what a culture vulture is. He then drops the patois, Jamaican accent, and then starts describing himself when saying he's not a culture vulture. You see, if I was walking around with string vests on and mm. I like a spliff out my mouth and a dragon style. See, that's what we... Uh, mm. No, I do, but I'm saying I'm not walking around. He's not walking around <laughs> in a string vest. He's not walking around... With a little spliff hanging out his mouth. Well, I mean, I think he might be. All the videos we watched of him, he was smoking a little spliff. Wasn't he? See, that's what we... No, I do, but I'm saying... I'm... So you don't smoke weed? No, I do, but the other guy says... Do you get what I'm saying? I don't know what... But what, what is what... a culture vulture? Let's stop. Do you get what I'm saying? No, you've said nothing there. I love that his idea of a culture vulture is someone wearing a string vest. Do you remember uh, M.R had that freaky little picture of him wearing a string vest at Carnival? Spliff out my mouth and a dragon stout. See, that's and, what we... Uh, a dragon stout. A culture vulture, to, in my eyes, is someone that imitates everything Let you do. Let me see if it's even... It's so because you're dropping out cut certain things, you're thinking, <laughs> like... No, I'm saying... You're dropping out certain things, so I, that's why I love this RTM podcast. They, do, they don't let people get away with things. Now, most podcasts, when they have a guest on, they let them lie straight to their face. We've covered it on this show before, many a time. You just let the lies come tumbling out, and then people are just like, oh, yeah, interesting. We believe everything you say. You best believe every single show uh, M.R's been on. None of them have called him on anything, except this beautiful RTM podcast. It's not like I'm out here doing the most to act like a yard man. You are! He actually is. Everybody go look up what he's about and you'll see. Because <laughs> I'm really not. But someone would say you are doing the most to act like a yard man. What, Me? I speak Jamaican. <laughs> but Jamaicans come here and speak it. Jamaicans come here and speak English. So yeah. are they culture vultures? But then the, maybe. How? Because he's... he's come to a country and learned another language. And he no, speaks no, no, you're going mad. That's racist. <laughs> I knew English from before I came in. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah. Yo, no, I like that, Spray. But Man, we cut, I said no, that. We cut it. So every time one of these um, white boys comes on this sofa, he accuses them of being racist. That's like a go-to slagging for him when it comes to a white person, just calling them racist. And he's right, because it triggers every single one of them. So he's like, no, you're wrong for that, Spray. Don't say I'm racist. It's like, everyone, nobody thinks you're racist. But it's hilarious how badly you take it. Uh, Snowy Danger did the exact same thing. There, we cut it there, we Man, cut it there. That trailer cut as you're racist and it yeah, cut already. Yeah, 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 yeah. It cut already, you're out of there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's, joke, man. yeah joke. <laughs> he's out of there. It can't, that, it's no, really, he's out of there. To a certain he's like, out look. Of there. No, look. spray it down to that to not come in a race. Rare Witch asks the question everybody asks. Did he live in Jamaica for an extended period? Not at all. So yeah. if me go to road and say a yard man and say, yo, oh, go on, brother, yeah, man, big up yourself, yo, manners and respect, you that know, big up to you and the family. How does that make me a culture vulture? No, man, that, man, that... Well, you could just say it in your normal voice. I think I think that's the point that everybody's 
harping on at here. I mean, I love that he switches off the patois halfway through. In my opinion, a culture vulture is somebody that imitates everything from another culture. So it'd be how they dress. Well, that's the... not what culture vulture means to me. But what does it mean that's why I'm saying everyone's entitled to their opinion, isn't it? So to me, mm. like what culture vulture is to me is someone who's taken from the culture, any culture, for their own personal benefit. But you're not actually not in the community. You're actually going to go back, take all this and go and do rap. Like when you get what you want from the... the all right, so... It says excessive. So hopefully they talk, they bring up Drake because Drake's the most famous culture vulture. You know what I mean? He, you know, he uses people for their songs. Here's a popping song. And then he goes, takes it, makes it its own. Gives them a little verse. Gives the person who made the song a little verse on it or whatever. They go hot for 15 minutes and then they go away and you never hear of him again. But Drake just keeps going up and up and up. Drake is also a fake in Jamaican. We can add him to the list of fake in Jamaicans. Don't we forget him doing a British slang voice. Or pretentious, yeah, interest. So that would mean like, excessive you're pretending. Like... No, but all pretending, isn't it? You know, like pretentious. Yeah, like, yeah. like you're Pre pretending. pretending. Yeah, yeah. Pretend pretend the, the major word in that. So, like, you're acting. Like, like I said, yeah. He's being pretentious. You're for it, you're pretending you're for it. But really, you've got, a, which I, for starters, I already said that. I'm not saying you're a culture vulture. Mm -hmm. I'm saying. A little bit. You are a little bit, mate. But do you think Drake's a culture vulture? I'm not care about Drake. Now, do you think he's a culture vulture? He can't say anything about Drake because he wants, he thinks, oh, there might be a chance I'll get a feature with Drake in the future. Now, do you think he's a culture vulture? <laughs> do you think Drake is a culture vulture? So, do you think he's a culture vulture? Me personally, mm. none of these people are willing to disrespect. There was a Drake. time when I thought he was. I didn't. But all you've said that no. After what you just said, what Drake I come to England come to drill for? Drake is a drill artist. Come is in. he a culture no, no, vulture? No, wait, wait, wait. You come. To, that's what I knew of you. Then <laughs> so you come I love to this. England. Yes, we've ascertained he is a culture vulture. They said, "What is a culture vulture?" He described himself pretty much. Uh, we heard him drop the accent, etc. Right, so. He sees himself as way better than M.R. and Tug of War. Uh, he doesn't out and out diss M. Dot in this, but he does imply that he's way better and that M. Dot's a little bit of a joke because everybody knows M. Dot's, you know, a meme, right? So he says there's no comparison for me and M. Dot and Tug of War. He's better than Holodem. He said he got that tattoo on his face to differentiate himself from M.R. and Tug of War and the rest of the faking Jamaicans. If that's not an identity crisis, then I don't know what is. I think these poor men have something missing from their lives, and they've just filled that void with cosplaying as a Jamaican. Is there anything wrong with that? No. But there's also nothing wrong with the rest of the world going, you're a big weirdo, mate. All right. Extreme measure, tug of war, M.R., Talapaton. I know more about dancehall music than all of them combined. But, you know, and I also understand and speak Jamaican Patois fluently from living in the garrisons of Spanish town for six years. <laughs> you don't hear me talking like that, do you? You know, I don't rub it in people's faces. I just enjoy the music sometimes. So people aren't wrong at all for saying, hearing this. My brother than the whole of them. People are not wrong for hearing that and going, hold on a second, this is extremely bizarre. <laughs> right? So let's hear this guy dissing Tug of War. See. Tug of War a punk. So Tug, Tug of War is a punk. punk. Then I must <laughs> just hear some move. Man, I talk about, oh, look at my egg. You see him with, with yeah, a suit. A punk, that the man. Suit. You don't see the man a madman, <laughs> You see, didn't it? The man a madman, you know? <laughs> so, you wouldn't say that, like, he's been, like, far hey, in it for a little while. He was, like, the earlier... He's a bad guys, boy, man. Where him found her? Because before him, you have white man, we had way before him, you know? Which white man? You Dominic. Have, you have Dominic, you have... Dominic Shine. told me it's not yeah. one mother, you yeah. know. Yeah, what you say, Snow? Dominic. You have <laughs> <laughs> Extreme measure, everyone. That might have gone past you, some of you. So Extreme Measure, claiming not to be a culture vulture. Listen to what he has just said. It, <laughs> they're defending Tug of War and look at Young Spray. 
He knows exactly what they're doing here. They're saying Tug of War's a bad man. Tug of War's the first to do it. Tug of War's the real one. Look at him. He has a twinkle in his eye. He knows exactly what he's doing to wind up Extreme Measure here. And Extreme Measure has completely, completely taken the bait here. But listen to what he says. We were before him, you know. Which one, man? Dominic. You have, you have Dominic. So there's people, white men to do it way before him. So the fact that that's a focus to him, to be like, oh, there are other white dancehall Jamaican artists or not Jamaican artists. It's like your focus shouldn't be on how Jamaican -y we act. It should be on, are you making good dancehall music? If that's what they all were focused on rather than all this other shh, then there wouldn't be a problem, I think. And that's me trying to be as fair as I can to lovely wee extreme measure. But Willie here exposes himself here a little bit. Because before him, you have white man, we had we before him, you know. So before tug of war, there were white men. I'm, I'm sorry I'm pausing every second to explain it, but some people don't speak fluent patois like me. Which white man? Dominic. You have, you have Dominic, you have Shine. Dominic told me it's not one matter, you, you know. Yellow. What do you say, Snow? Dominic. Dominic, Shine, Yellow, what? <laughs> yellow man. He thinks yellow man is white he thinks yellow man is white everybody he thinks yellow man's white so the uh the first comment i got on my extreme measure youtube clip was i think it was a guy called Kane dog or someone and he says extreme measure is a good one he's absolutely delusional now i I don't think I'm breaking the fourth wall to say that it's only really stupid idiots that do this fake and Jamaican thing. There, there's no like real intelligentsios doing this fake and Jamaican thing. It is always extremely dopey twats. Excuse my language. But I mean, he thinks yellow man is white. That's how stupid he is. So I think I'd like to put a... I wanted to maybe do a ranking of all the fake and Jamaicans, but we got to now take into account just how thick some of them are. Some of them actually are. You know, I thought Tilapatom was a bag of bricks thick. <laughs> Relax yourself, man. You see me? Cause you, yeah. know, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you love talk about suck your mother, this and suck your... Where I'm gonna run down people. Don't make me see how Birmingham. So he's just said, um, Tug of War comes out with all this uh, suck your mother stuff. And, you know, uh, I don't know, saying suck your mother is probably the most offensive thing you can say to a Jamaican patois guy. Bam, bam. As far as we can tell. So let's see if he says any more disses at Tug of War. Now, I should like this, but my nasty character isn't allowing me to like him. I have to... I'm too busy getting the jobs in. I should uh, I should have sprinkle a few more notes into my notes here that just says, Be nice. Oh, uh, I got one. <laughs> I got one comment on the um, my M.R. Exposed video, and it said, This video is distasteful. <laughs> And I was thinking, yes, it is. It is. My video is a tad distasteful, but so is Turn Red. Because you know the chat go already. You yeah. see me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I bad messed it up. So there he is saying, I run people down, which me, which that's a threat towards tug of war. You say white to white. Suck yourself. No, a white on white crime. The, none of the white to white. Man to man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You white see me? for that. <laughs> <laughs> why for that okay so that means pause i can't believe in 2024 people are still coming out with this no homo pause why for that stuff i mean it continues on i mean i thought we agreed 10 years ago that it was time to stop saying that you can't could do you really hate all gay people so much it's like these are so terrified that someone might think they're gay now I, they go on about it so much that i think this guy's sucking him off he's bumming him so i just had to say that to defend spoke about like, <laughs> to defend the people the gay people them <laughs> this clip is called extreme tug of war is a quiz i can't. i'll edit that bit out of the clip just in case <laughs> i want them two to be on my side so i was just making that up i was just making that up since you're being such homophobes throughout this entire clip and i'm trying to beg using up 
But then I can't be tarred with this homophobic feather. <laughs> this homophobic brush. And again, look, they still, they've got a TV here. But in front of the TV, they put a ratty poster. Uh, I love this ratty poster. Why wouldn't they get rid of that and just put the picture on the screen? Doesn't make any sense. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, what do you think about tug of war? Tug of war, a washman. Uh, He's a washman, he said. Read what? I don't know, I don't know. I don't tug of war, a punk. <laughs> tug of war is a punk! Bam, bam. <laughs> trailer, let me sit up. I can't believe I bumped <laughs> into a trailer. Tug of war, a punk. I can't believe I bumped into a trailer. You said tug of war, sniff beer, yeah. coke. Yeah, I can't believe it. Tug of war, sniff beer, coke, he just said. Tug of war, sniff beer, drugs in our mouth, and talk about, look upon my egg. Think Look upon me egg. Pan on my leg this. Yeah, crackhead man. He's a crackhead. He's a punk. There. That's what that's what extreme thinks of tug of war. I have a very similar opinion of tug of war. So let's uh head over to well, Tug of War channel of now. Tug of War, one thing I have learned about him is he hates being dissed. Not only does he hate being dissed, it makes his blood boil when it's another white faking jamaican he can't stand it uh he went through this with talapaton i think m.r was dragged into that and it was around that time when all these ones were beefing that i got to know them all that was about five years ago or so tug of war is just the ugliest human being i mean this this looks like anthony kumia without the hair right so, um, since that video came out the, that I just showed you with Extreme Measure on the RTM podcast, that was about three weeks ago. Tug of War has released, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So he's done six generic diss tracks, right? These are generic geriatric diss tracks, right? Uh, what do I mean by that? These are war dubs, I guess you would call these. And... These could be aimed at anyone. He probably had these sh shitty little raps. Now, uh, Tug of War, he's a nursery rhymer. His raps are terrible. There's very little substance to them. And it's filled with caps, lies, porkies, whatever you want to call them. He is the biggest fibber and liar when it comes to everything, right? And, you know, I feel like people have this real soft spot for him because he is like a silly, eccentric character in some of his songs. But when you watch his interviews as well, most of his chat is about how big of a badass gangster he is, right? So he continues the cap outside of the art and in real conversation to people. He tells the same three, him being a gangster in the 80s stories over and over again, we're all just supposed to respect him and act like he isn't a complete joke, a meme. I was supposed to be being nicer, but can't help it. Now, tug of war makes me appreciate M.R.'s better qualities, right? Let me just say that. Let me just say that. Because tug of war doesn't have any of the panache of an M.R., let me tell you that right now. Tug of War is the universal credit death from the seventh seal, says Rob. So, shall we check out one of these crappy little war dubs? Let's go to the newest one. This one's called War. Done, no freaking argument. Yo, Chester. What do we know? Me ready for go war, any one of them. Ready for go war, any one of them. War, any one of them. Me ready for go kill, any one of them. Ready for go kill, any one of them. There's nobody that's like around his age or slightly older that hangs around with him. These wee kids. He's the only people he can get to work with. Fair play to him if he's helping them out with their careers. Z Scray says, Is that T Mike and Wee Joe cameoing? It certainly looks like it. So that was Tug of War with. Uh, the lie song. There's none of those lyrics are really directed specifically. They're all, it's just a generic diss song. And he has, he pumps these out like nobody's business. Everyone's sick of faking Jamaicans? I hope not because we got a shit ton more of them. No one brightens up my day just like it. That's true, so it is. Girl, you touch my heart. Anytime you pass 
watching the pum pum shop. Here's another class. I'm gonna take a wee look like. Watch this. So if I jump on Prolaw, jump Prolaw. 